I'm covering the five best rank tips to reach diamond rank or really any rank in season 15. So let's get into it. Number one, avoid fights in risky areas. Don't worry, I'll explain what some of these risky areas are, but you just gotta know. The new map, Broken Moon, has brought in some different playstyles that can make ranked extremely frustrating at times. It can also be incredibly rewarding if you're not on the side of these frustrating things, but here's what you wanna know. There's a ton of zip rails throughout the map, and this will make third parties intense at times. And it's not just third parties, it's actually fourth, fifth, and sometimes sixth parties. Places like Promenade, Terraformer, or the open hill space in between them are usually going to be a recipe for disaster. This whole middle of the map attracts any and every team as soon as gunfire rings out. And because the way these POIs are structured, it's nearly impossible to see or hear how many teams are actually involved or about to be involved in the fight. This means that you have to be more conservative when it comes to assessing which fights to be taking or which ones to leave be. Now, one of the more difficult things about this map is that you may be thinking you're taking an isolated fight at one of the POIs on the edge of the map, only for it to also turn into a five team pileup. And this does make it really tough at times to decide what fights you wanna take or not. So a good rule of thumb is just always be prepared for at least one other team to be getting involved either during the fight or shortly thereafter. This sort of paranoia will help you and your squad be a bit more prepared for what's about to come. And to be honest with you, all of it has made this rank split really difficult for me at times because it feels like there isn't a good grasp on what is a safe fight to take and what isn't. I'm going to elaborate on this later in the video, but the last thing you should also do is have a timer in your head around how long is this fight actively going on. If you're getting up to 20, 30, 30 seconds and there are no knocks on the enemy squad you probably want to think about hey should we position ourselves to back up to a building or have some cover in the event a third party does come if you're not doing that and you're out in the open and you've got this fight that's been going on 30 45 seconds it's probably not going to end well especially if you're in some of these more centrally located pois number two run these legend comps especially if you're struggling First is Seer or Bloodhound. Now, most of you will know by now having a recon legend is of the utmost importance these days due to the information and value they provide to the squad. Seer would be my first pick because of, well, he's pretty OP right now, but if you wanted to play Bloodhound, you definitely could. Next would be Wraith, Horizon, Valkyrie, or Pathfinder. This map heavily favors a lot of the mobility legends. If you don't have legends that can help navigate your squad, you will most likely run into a good bit of trouble when situations become unmanageable, or maybe you even need to make a large rotation. Valk is good for this map because similar to Storm Point, there's a ton of mountains that create choke points and can wind up complicating some of the larger rotations. Just make sure you have enough verticality to clear some of these mountains if you're going to try to use your ultimate. The third pick would be maybe Newcastle or Gibby. Having a defensive tank legend like these two is always a sound strategy, especially if the player using them is knowledgeable with their kits. Now, I think both of these legends fare well on a pre-made squad, particularly on this map, because of the wide open spaces, as well as the ability to pull off some helpful revives when you need them, since you're definitely going to be getting into some hectic fights. Now, I also tried out running some of the assault legends like Fuse and Revenant, and I did find some success with them, but I wouldn't say they're meta by any means. Your legend comp can be pretty flexible flexible this season if you want it to be, but I think it's sort of the same as previous seasons. You are definitely putting your team at a disadvantage if you don't have one recon and at least one movement legend on your squad. Number three, do not be too aggressive. All hell will break loose. Ideally, what you want to look for is a fight off drop and then chilling to end game. That's what I found has worked pretty good. You won't always be able to do this and you're not always going to be able to find that straight up 50-50 off drop. So what you're going to want to do is focus on third party. I know that's not cool to say, but if you're reaching platinum or anything above that, you don't really want to try to take a straight up fight anytime after your initial drop because you should expect to get third party every single time. You don't want to set yourself up to automatically be disadvantaged. There's way too many ways for teams to get involved on this map, and because this ranked mode sort of incentivizes being aggressive, since there's not a cap for kill points, ranked these days is unfortunately not that different from pubs. But just because there is no kill cap doesn't mean you need to play like that. In fact, I'm advising the opposite. Way too often on my journey up to diamond rank, I would see teams or teammates be aggressive in the dumbest ways. 
they would usually end up dying for it or dying shortly after to another team that was right there, ready to play off their mistakes. I've said this before, but you have to have discretion when it comes to what fights to take. Now, this may sound obvious to some, but I feel like there's this crazy idea in some players' heads that just because they see someone, they have to try to fight them. And this is just not a good long-term strategy, especially if you're playing with randoms. Guys, I'll be honest here. This problem in particular is at an all-time high. I've been playing ranked with a squad, duo queuing, and solo queuing for 12 plus seasons. And the last three seasons in particular, I swear 70% of randoms try to run at every single team in this hyper aggressive playstyle, which doesn't work out. First, it's not good because of everything I've just explained. But second, when you play with randoms, it's utterly foolish to treat the match like you're playing with a bunch of pro players. You're not. You don't know what your teammates are capable of and what they may want to do. So play as a team and you will absolutely see better results. I can't tell you how many times a random teammate would run so far ahead, try to pull off a 1v3, die, and then try to trash talk me and my duo or just trash talk the teammates in general. Like it's, it's insanity. Now, some of you may be familiar with these kinds of random teammates, and I'll be honest, when they do this, I just flat out won't play their game. If they want to get hung out to dry while they try to take a 1v3 fight for no good reason, then I let them. I know better by now, and if your instinct is telling you this is not the right fight to take, then go with that. Number four, try to land in low key areas. With a new map comes a lot of hectic behavior, so make sure to be looking around in the dropship before you drop at the first location you see. You could get used to going to some place like Eternal Gardens because a lot of teams aren't going there and it's a good POI, but the next game the flight path could have that POI as the first drop spot. You're probably going to want to avoid going there if it's going to have multiple teams. You don't want to get too attached to one POI as the dropship path typically dictates where people will land and where they may avoid. And in ranked, it's just not smart to try to land with anything more than two other teams at a singular POI. If you're landing at a spot with more than one other team, you always, always, always want to try to position yourself to not be the first team to fight. Sometimes you may not be able to avoid this, but you got to try your best to put your team in the spot where you don't get third partied as soon as you finish that first fight, because getting sent back to the lobby in 18th place with 3 KP is still going to net you negative RP. It's time to get in the habit of thinking about multiple waves of enemy teams, not just one enemy team to deal with. Tip number five, if you're struggling, avoid solo queuing at all costs. If you can even find just one teammate so that you can duo queue it, well, that's much better than going at it solo. Obviously, finding a trio is ideal, but Apex is such a team oriented game, more so now than ever before. Finding teammates, I feel like is necessary in order to have a good time ranking up. Now, every player will hit a ceiling in one rank. It'll be different for each and every one of you watching this, but that's definitely the time when you want to start finding those teammates. I'm telling you guys, it's night and day with the results. If I compare solo queuing versus playing with my friends, it's so much more efficient in terms of the RP we gain and the time we spend playing. It's also just way more enjoyable when you find a team you click with. I can get to masters while solo queuing, but it's going to take me like five times longer than if I was going to do it with a squad. And it's going to cause me to lose a ton of brain cells in the process. No one enjoys having a random teammate run across the map thinking they're Rambo trying to 1v3 a fight only to die and then spam ping their banner as they call you trash. Look for teammates. You can join my Discord, you can invite players you have a good game with, you can just ask people on social media. There's a ton of different options. It's simple. May not be easy, but it's definitely simple. Look, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn about two vital tips for every legend in Apex, well, I covered it all in this video here. Check it out next. Peace.